Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. In this episode, I will be unboxing and assembling a Thule T2 Pro XT bike rack along with its use and a general review. This is a two bike version designed to fit a two inch receiver hitch. I purchased this unit from REI on their anniversary sale around Memorial Day and paid approximately 479 bucks for it. It was a pretty good deal considering that these normally sell for around $600 at various online retailers. I will be sure to include some links below. Without further delay, let's have a look in the box. One of the first things that caught my eye was that this unit is American made, so in theory, should protect American jobs. It looks like we have an instruction manual. These motorboat looking things, I guess would be the trays that hold the rear wheels. There's a couple of main rails with lockdowns. And from what I've seen in the pictures, these look to be sliding strap supports for the rear wheels. There's a couple of hardware packets, and it looks like they included a few tools to aid in the assembly process. Last but not least, the main body of the rack. Before we go any further, I am going to declare that I am not a paid advertiser for Thule, REI, or any other brands or retailers mentioned in this video. So let's go put this thing together. The easiest way to support this unit while assembling it is to insert it into a receiver hitch. Thule has an interesting design as you can see that utilizes a hook that pivots where the pin would ordinarily go and next brings me to one of the parts that I really like about this rack. It locks itself into the hitch by way of a locking knob. Once you tighten it, it wedges itself securely inside the hitch and when you lock it, it disables the ability to loosen it back up to remove the rack. Pretty freaking awesome, huh? The lock tumblers take a bit of finagling to get installed in the hole, but they will go in if you keep with it. The instructions are really vague and do not include any words. They are just drawings with symbols. From what I hear, these types of instructions eliminate the need to pay a translator to write instructions in other languages. Anyhow, once you get the tumbler installed, just tighten it up, and as the instructions show, I mean the symbols, use a little muscle. So let's move on to the layout of the main beams. The one with the Thule logo goes on the rear side. I installed the four socket head machine screws that hold each of them on just finger tight. And we are going to squeeze the handle and pivot the rack upwards to make the tightening of these easier. Although Thule was nice enough to provide us with the required Allen wrench, I am going to use a ratchet with my stubby hex drive sockets commonly known as dick pins to tighten these. Next, grab the eight coarse thread screws out of the hardware packet along with the two motorboat looking trays. These trays will get installed with the front of the boat facing inward as shown. Pivot the rack to its upright position and install the eight screws and tighten them up. Next, slide one of the strap pieces onto each beam with the release button facing toward the back, followed by the end cap. The end cap is held on by yet another coarse thread screw and be sure to install a washer under these screws as this will help keep these sliding pieces from sliding off as you're going down the road, which of course is pretty important. And pretty much all that's left for the assembly process is putting the lock tumblers in that attach to the front wheel lockdown arms. As with the other lock, they will snap in with a little finagling. I kind of like these because it helps lock the bike to the rack and basically keeps the honest people honest. To use these locks, the cable is spring-loaded, it extends and wraps around the rim, etc., then locks back into itself by the tumbler. I would recommend the use of a heavy-duty cable lock in addition to this in high crime areas. Being that the keys were not marked with the Thule logo, I decided to engrave Thule into the keys so I know what they are for. After all, what else would I put on them? Don't answer that. When installing two bikes on the rack, I would recommend dropping the seat if they are equipped with dropper posts. If you own a fat bike, here is a little something that took me a bit to figure out. The straps may appear to be too short, but if you look closely at how they are installed into the rear tire support, they have this little tab that you can pull out and reinstall into another hole to lengthen them. The instructions are extremely vague on this, but these are designed to accept tires larger than 5 inches wide. Now let's take a second to talk about its strong points and weak points, starting with the weak points first. 
I thought that the instructions could have been a lot clearer by describing things with words, especially with the strap adjustments and the lock tumbler installations. I thought that the rails could have been made out of aluminum to prevent rust as well as making the rack considerably lighter. Although this may sound nitpicky, I thought that the keys could have been engraved or marked somehow with the Thule name. And here's some of the strong points. The rack is very simple to use and seems to be self-adjusting to most bikes regardless of size. It is very solidly built and proudly made in America. I thought that the locks were a pretty nice detail as well. So in conclusion, would I recommend this rack? Hell yeah! It's a little bit on the pricey side, but if you're not in a hurry to get one and you wait for them to go on sale, you can get one for under 500 bucks like I did. Otherwise, they're going to be about 100 bucks more. I think that this model, if taken care of, will provide you with years of superior service. If you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up and consider subscribing. Share this video with your friends and leave any questions, comments, or suggestions for future reviews below. Click the bell and you will be notified of future uploads. And if you've done all of that or none of that, it's okay. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.